Hey there, it's Vin from Enviado. You may remember me from such YouTube videos as how to weld aluminum pie cuts or uh, how to weld an O2 bung on your pipe. Today, I'm gonna show you how to weld some titanium. So we got some three inch titanium uh, pipe here. Uh, what we're gonna need to get this all done is we're gonna need to make sure we have a super clean surface. So we got some acetone here. We're gonna make sure we wipe down where we're gonna weld to make sure it's really clean. We're gonna use some foil to help purge because you're gonna need argon to purge through it to get full penetration and protect the inside from oxidization. Um, we're gonna need some titanium filler rod, obviously. And we're gonna need a brush to just wipe and scrub it down just to make sure we have no frays and no um, rags on it. And then lastly, we're gonna be using our take water, obviously. Have this Spheric BBW um, cup here, which is really good for gas coverage, especially when you're doing titanium. You're gonna need a lot of gas coverage. Uh, you'll see sometimes other people have trailing cups that as long as you have your argon covering as you're welding, you should be fine. You don't have any um, oxidization or any contamination. And so let's get to it. All right, so first thing we're gonna have to do is prep our metal. It's the most important part of any welding process. Make sure you have clean metal, uh, no oils, no contamination, because that's where everything starts to roll downhill. So what we're just gonna do, put some acetone on this rag. I'm gonna clean the outside and the inside of the metal we're working on. And here I also like to just brush off any uh, rag debris that could come off during this process. And I'm gonna get it ready for tacking. Obviously, if you're building something, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your marks are in the right place and however you're gonna do it, but um, I have this block here, which I'm gonna run my first hose through, which has this big spot here. We're gonna run our purge line here, so we're even gonna to wanna to purge it as we tack it because we can get contamination even just under the tacking process. Uh, so from here, I'm gonna want to purge our pipe, which means we're gonna have to have argon flowing through it and not trapped in. So by doing that, we're able to cover the top here, but not just that, we actually actually have to poke some holes in it to let the oxygen escape and that fresh argon will come through as we weld. And typically, uh, when we're running a purge, you run dual cylinder, dual flow. So you're gonna run just a, uh, maybe like five CFM flowing through it. Kind of just give it some time to get the oxygen out because oxygen is what you don't want when you're welding. And then we're also, make sure we're welding on, uh, DC negative, DC negative is for steel, titanium. Essentially, the process of welding titanium is very similar to stainless steel or any kind, sort of steel. Um, it's just it's a little bit finicky. It's thin, so you gotta be careful with your amperages, but essentially the same rules apply about uh, one amp per thousand of an inch. And so typically, I would run this right now just to tack it. I'll run it at 60 amps. So now that we know we got some good flow going, we could hear it to make sure that we actually have some flow. We're just gonna go ahead and tack it in four spots. We're gonna wanna make sure we let our post flow continue on so that 
it doesn't, again, contaminate. Biggest word of the day, no contamination. But one thing I like to do, especially for tacking, and especially with titanium, again, we want to get as much argon on it as possible. I'm just rolling on the foot pedal just a little bit to get the gas flowing and kind of essentially getting like five amps on. Um, when I, once I feel comfortable, then I ramp it up just to get a good puddle and then I pull off right away to get it tacked into place. So now it's tacked up. You can see we got four tacks on essentially each corner. And then on the inside here, you can see we got no contamination, no purple or no yellow. Uh, we're gonna get ready to water bead. Typically, I like to work horizontally. Um, I've got this V block here. Uh, you, I'll set it up like this and we'll get it set up for the purge. But basically, what I like to do technique wise, um, using a TIG finger, one of the best things you could ever use for welding. Working, rolling towards yourself and your body. We're kind of able to get the best coverage. Because what we want to do is when we're rolling here, we want to make sure that this tungsten and the, um, the torch here remains the same constant angle towards the pipe as much as possible. Then that way we're going to be able to get consistent beads. We're going to be able to feed our uh, filler rod consistently with good tempo. And then it's going to look nice and it's going to have proper penetration. Um, so usually having my finger anchored onto here will be e using this. I'm able to just to roll and kind of keep the same angle here. Uh, next, I kind of made this uh, third hand. As you can see that the weight of this is not much titanium. Using this to kind of hold it down here, I'm able to roll kind of with better freedom and also using a flexible head. Nice. <laughs> Uh, using a flexible head here, this is a CK9. I'm able to get the exact angle I want onto my pipe here. So if I'm in a weird position from out to here, you know, I could go here to here. But ideally, you want to be right on top of it, as squared as possible. Get this out of here. Then you're able to get nice, consistent beads here. For our settings, um, because again, titanium is really finicky. I like to use a pulse. Uh, usually I'll run one pulse per second. And at this, I'll run this at 45 amps. And then that's, I'll let it pulse. And so with the pulse, what happens is when it, on the draw back, so you'll have the 45 amps, if I have my foot full at max, and for one second and on the off cycle, it'll not be 45 amps and then it'll kind of cool down the metal so that it, we won't create a puddle that will burn through or but for you if you're welding this you kind of have to go with your technique and what you're best at uh, position wise or how fast you could feed because um, again titanium just takes some practice it's not really too hard but it still has its challenges if you don't know what you're doing but yeah other than that we're going to get the setup for welding and then we'll see how this turns out all right, so we got this funky setup here. Again, uh, you could also, if this was a longer pipe, it'd be easier to kind of throw a rag or throw some um, aluminum foil on this side. But doing this way, it kind of keeps everything stable uh, without turning things too much and without things moving all around. Basically, uh, what we're gonna do is, I like to keep uh, these two tack points kind of even with each other and kind of have the peak on the top. So I'm able to get good coverage starting from here, all the way over to here, and kind of just following the line with my head in the, the filler rod. So basically, uh, we have everything set. We got 45 uh, pulse per second at one second. So we're gonna do one second, one second, one second, one second. I have this set at 50% duty cycle, which means it'll be on for 50%, and then it'll be off for 50%. Uh, you could set up However you like, again, uh, welding is very personal and however your technique and whatever you're better at. So you just gotta practice and figure out what works best for you. So um, 
We got our pipe purged, and then we're just gonna get to rolling. And again, we're gonna want our post flow to go on as long as possible. That way it ensures no contamination. And I'll even show an example here. We have some contamination here. Uh, something went funky on with the tack. That will happen. But you can see, you typically want your welds to be silver, barely gold. Uh, you don't want this, but real life. Stuff like this happens. What you're gonna wanna do, kinda just to alleviate wherever we're at right now. It's not a huge deal, especially for our exhaust. It's not really big, but uh, from here, we're just gonna like, you can see as soon as we just did that, it's the contamination isn't really that deep. It's kind of surface level. We could roll this off with the, a brush and then we can continue on. But before we move on to our next pass, um, I like to make sure that the temperature of this pipe is cool. Uh, titanium releases the heat really fast, so just the little blow with air, you can feel that it's not even hot anymore, right? Uh, what happens a lot of times if you just weld, roll, weld, 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 the heat kind of does weird things and I'm not sure the science behind it, but it does get more prone to contamination. So what I like to do when I'm welding a lot, I just blow it with air, let it cool enough to the touch, you can do it your next pass. Wanted to show you what happens when you use a dirty tungsten. You get, see we can see the difference between the colors here. We have this purple compared to this side where you get this gold, uh, silver looking color. Uh, technically speaking, as nice as the purple looks, you do not want that. So that's why you wanna make sure you have a clean tungsten, clean surface, um, everything clean because that's what happens when you have contamination. And then if you have a spot of oil, you'll start to see it blow up and then you kind of lose all the color there. Hmm. So again, make sure everything's clean. New tungsten, even if the filler rod's clean uh, or dirty, you don't want dirty filler rod. You wanna make sure everything is clean, clean, clean. clean. You can see right now, uh, we've got three quarters of the way done. Uh, if you look inside, I don't know if you can see that. You know, some light here. Oh, there you go. But basically, you can see how we have nice penetration and you can kind of see the beads on the inside here. That's when you know you have good uh, purging and you can see the colors, everything is silver on the inside. Uh, next, I just want to show you what happens when you don't purge on the inside and you'll see what happens on the top and you'll see what happens on the inside here. All right. So, showed you some ways how to weld titanium and how not to weld titanium. Again, we could see here, this is essentially how you want it to look with these colors. Uh, less color, the better. And not like this, where you have contamination, dirty tungsten. Um, and then we'll see, look on the inside here. Basically, I got a light we can use anymore. You can see how on the three quarters where we have the purge on the inside, 
you have full penetration, you see the beads, no discoloration. When I'm talking about that yellow here, you'll see where it wasn't purged. That's when you'll see that what happens in this case is there's crystallization. When you running this through an exhaust or um, this is where the exhaust, it will crack. The welds will crack because there's not full penetration here. You could see the difference of having, you'll see the, there's beads on this side and then where there's the contamination, you'll see there are actually no beads and you could still see where the two um, metals butt up together. All right, so that's basically how you can weld titanium. Again, number one rule, make sure everything's clean. Uh, you'll see this is not the best of my work, but these were just some two scrap pieces of titanium I found in a box. They've been dirtying over the past few months. Um, but if you like what you saw here, you guys want to learn other things that I do, we do here at NV Auto. Um, you want to see other videos, put a comment down below, like, subscribe, do whatever. I don't know if there's things going to pop up. But uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. So I got only listen to Big Papa when I weld. <laughs> I do listen to Baby Make Music when I weld though. You do listen to Baby Make Music? <laughs> it's only, Barry I White. <laughs> I mean, it is the perfect kind of music, mending two pieces of metal together. Yeah, yeah, when two things become one. <laughs> Spice Girls. <laughs> I don't know.